Here is my ground beef and potato casserole. Alright, look at all those layers. All we need is a fork. First thing we're going to do is start preparing our potatoes. Now I'm using russet potatoes and they're about this size. We're going to be doing six for this recipe. What we're going to do is go ahead and peel them. Once we've peeled our potatoes, I'm just going to put them into a bowl of water. Rinse off any starch and any of the excess dirt that's on the skin of the potatoes. That's our last potato. We're going to bring another bowl over. Now we're going to slice our potatoes and I'm just using a mandolin slicer and I'm going to be on the number three which is probably looks like about a quarter of an inch to half an inch. Now I'm going to be using my kitchen glove. This is really good for when you're slicing and dicing things and it'll keep your hands from getting hurt while you're using the mandolin also. So we're just going to take our potato, shake off any excess, and we're going to slice our potatoes. Just watch your hands and be very careful. There we go. Now, that's the size that we're looking at. All right, I'm going to finish doing the rest of these. Now you want to make sure you put your potatoes in a microwave safe bowl. All right, yes, those look really good. All right, I'm going to take my glove off now. My mom had bought me these gloves years ago to help me in the kitchen when I'm slicing things. That way I protect my hand. Now if you're interested in these, you can find these in my store, my Amazon store, or you can find these down below in the description box of the video. All right, those look really good, all evenly sliced. So what we're going to do is take some paper towels. Now I wet these and just wringed them out. And I'm just going to place them across the potatoes. Now since these are in a microwave safe bowl, we will place this in the microwave for one and a half minutes. And then we'll test them. Now we're just looking to kind of par cook these. All right, let's check these. It's a kind of a starting point, and if you can't get your fork through the potato, you need to put them back in. We'll put them back in for another minute and a half. All depends on the size of your potatoes. Yes, you can see how a fork went right through the potato. All right, we're going to set these off to the side. Go ahead and start breaking up your ground beef in a large skillet over medium-high heat, and we're going to start browning it. We're going to move over to our cutting board and we're going to start cutting up our onion. We're going to take a yellow onion, cut off the sides. We're going to take off that outer layer. We're going to cut the onion in half. Now we're going to make rings with this. So I'm just going to take my knife, I'm going to follow the lines of the onion. And cut rings. These are going to be half rings. And we'll just break them all up. And then we're going to add this to the ground beef. There we go. We're looking to get our ground beef nice and browned up and our onions nice and soft. Once the ground beef is browned up and the onions are nice and soft, make sure that you drain any excess grease out of your pot. We're going to go ahead and season with some salt, quarter of a teaspoon, black pepper, quarter of a teaspoon. We're going to enhance the onions with some onion powder, quarter of a teaspoon, some smoked paprika. We'll give it a nice flavor. A little smokiness, quarter of a teaspoon. Give it a nice color too. 
garlic powder, quarter of a teaspoon, and I'm gonna put in some oregano leaves. Sprinkle some right across the top. Probably looking at a quarter of a teaspoon. We're gonna blend this all together. Get those flavors into the ground beef and the onion. All right, we're gonna put these all up. We're gonna put in two cans of cream of soup. I've got one can of cream of celery. That's a great flavor. And I'm going to be putting in a can of cream of chicken. It's a lighter flavor for this dish. Or if you don't wanna use cream of chicken, you can use cream of mushroom. You can mix and match. You just wanna make sure you get two cans in, which is 20 ounces. Half a cup of milk, which we'll just slosh around, get any excess out that we can. And pour that in. And then we're gonna put in one cup beef broth. I'm just gonna put it into a can, stir that up, add that. All right, we're gonna combine this all together. We're gonna go ahead and turn off the burner. Start layering in a nine by 13. I'm gonna spray it with some nonstick cooking spray. I use avocado oil, it's a good one to use. This will keep the potatoes and everything from sticking. All right, we're gonna layer in half of the potatoes. Keep them nice and even. All right, we're gonna spoon in half of the meat mixture. That mixture right here smells delicious. All right, nice even layer. We are going to layer on eight ounces of sharp cheddar cheese. Well, I like to say, cheese it up. We're gonna take the rest of the potatoes layer them on top of the cheese. Now I'm not seasoning the potatoes because the mixture is already seasoned up well and then the cheese, you know, is salty goodness in itself. So we don't need all that in the potatoes. They'll absorb it all. We're gonna place the rest of that meat mixture on top. Ooh, nothing like a hearty casserole. This will do it right here. Shuffle over my cheese over here. You want to cover up all the potatoes so they cook in that delicious meat sauce that we made. Eight more ounces shredded cheddar cheese across the top. All right, we're going to take a sheet of foil. We're going to turn it over. We're going to spray it. This will keep the cheese from sticking. So we're going to turn it over. We're going to cover our pan, seal it. All right, we're gonna place it on a pan in case any of that goodness decides to spill out over the edges of your dish. We don't want it to go into the oven. We're gonna bake this in the oven. It's been preheating at 350 degrees for 45 minutes. We're gonna remove the foil and then we're gonna put it back in the oven for another 30 minutes until those potatoes are nice and tender. Just put a fork in, kind of break it up and see if it's tender enough. If not, you can add a few more minutes to it until you get to that desired tenderness of your potatoes. We want that cheese to be nice and golden brown on top. I pulled it out of the oven. It's been resting for about 20 minutes just to kind of pull itself together. I've tested the potatoes. They're nice and tender inside. So it took 45 minutes. I took off the foil, cooked it another 30 minutes, and then it rested for 20. Just to kind of give you an idea of what I was doing. Here is my ground beef and potato casserole. All right, look at all those layers. All we need is a fork. There it is. <laughs> Here's my bite. Mmm. Oh, that's very delicious. The potatoes are nice and tender, creamy-like. Got that delicious meat mixture in here, that cheese. Oh my goodness, I hope y'all give this a try. It is very delicious, very yummy. Y'all give me a thumbs up on this one. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and that bell notification. That way, you'll always know when dishes like this one here are made. I'll see y'all on the next episode.